Hello again, everybody. Um, I'm sitting in uh, the upstairs office in the house at the moment, looking outside the beautiful sunny afternoon. Uh, probably by the time you're watching this, if the forecasts are correct, it will be raining outside and maybe even a thunderstorm uh, going on. Uh, so I'm just going to enjoy the sunshine, even if just through the window uh, for as long as I can. Uh, on these two Sundays at the moment, we're uh, diving back into our key verse from, from Song of uh, Songs, chapter 2, verse 4, uh, and particularly two little phrases, leads me and over me. And we're looking at these phrases in the context of what we've been talking about earlier this year, looking at our shape, our God-given shape. Well, how has God uh, shaped us? Uh, what is it that he's created us to do? Um and also uh, Psalm 146, this list of things that God is up to in his world and, and the call to join in. And that, that we need to be led by God and we need to have him, his authority over us as we uh, respond to those things that he's doing and join in. And so uh, I was watching a program uh, a couple of years ago, uh, one of these kind of dog training things. You know, they have these um, programs where these experts come in and help people who are really struggling with various stuff and this was to do with dog training and this uh, owner took this dog for a walk and the dog was just basically pulling the owner along up the road uh, and going wherever they wanted to and the owner was finding it very difficult to control the dog and really the question is kind of who who was leading and, and here clearly the dog was leading and so this uh, expert came in alongside and spent a bit of time with them and and the goal was, and this is the, the place that they got to in the program as I watched, that the dog got to a point of just walking alongside the owner and the lead was actually hanging loose. It, it was still on the dog and still in the owner's hand, but the dog was so well behaved that he was just walking alongside the owner. And it's a really helpful picture that, that there's kind of three possibilities. One is that the dog is rushing ahead and pulling the owner and that's not going to be good for the dog uh, uh, or the owner um, the other one is that the dog's being behind and getting kind of dragged forward uh, by the owner and being forced to kind of try and keep up and the ideal picture is that one with the dog running alongside and I just thought it's a helpful picture in, in terms of how we think about being led by God that there's three possibilities that we can go rushing ahead and think we know what God wants and what God wants to do and go diving in. Sometimes that can not be good for us uh, and not achieve what um, God is wanting to achieve through us. Uh, other times perhaps we're behind and God's trying to pull us forward and lead us into something and we're reluctant and we're holding back. And again, that, that's not how it works. That picture of us walking alongside God, him in charge, him leading and us following and as I was thinking about that um, on Monday at our leadership uh, prayer and worship meeting, uh, Richard Cracknell, I think it was, talked about a, a picture that God had given him. Uh, I'd kind of shared some, some of the frustration that we feel sometimes and that I'm feeling as a church leader that we can't move things forward and it feels like we're just waiting uh, and, and there's a sense of frustration that we can't move forward as we think God is calling us to at the moment. And uh, Richard shared this picture of a of a wave and that we need to ride the wave that we're on. It's a surfing picture. And again, similar to the dog picture, if we're behind the wave, then we're going to miss the opportunity to enjoy all that the wave offers as a surfer. If we're in front of it, we're in danger of it crashing down on top of us and of, of us being um, swept over by the wave. And so we want that sense of being led, of riding the wave that God has for us, of being where he's calling us to be and doing what he's calling us to do. And just as I finish, there's a story from uh, Zechariah. And again, this was a passage that um, Trevor sent actually today, following on from the meeting on Monday from Zechariah 4. Um, Zechariah was, they were trying to rebuild the temple but it wasn't uh, going anywhere it was slow progress and things weren't being done and that carrying that frustration that i've just talked about and there's a very famous verse in Ze Ze zechariah chapter 4 and it's verse 6 uh, and it says so he said to me this is god this is the word of the lord to zerubbabel not by might nor by power 
but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Well, you've probably heard that and recognised that phrase, that sense of allowing the spirit to lead rather than us by our own might and power. Uh, and then there's a promise to Zerubbabel that his hands will eventually complete the work that God has called him to do. And then the verse that Trevor shared is actually in verse 10. And in the NIV, it says this, God speaks and he says, who dares despise the day of small things? Who dares despise the day of small things? That sometimes God is just asking and just uh, at work in small ways that perhaps we think are insignificant and unimportant and we have great visions and of what we want to achieve and how far we want to go and push things forward and God says don't this don't despise the day of small things because in them he is still at work and so again as we think about our God-given shape and and those pictures in Psalm 146 of God at work. Maybe there's a frustration. Yeah, we want to be much more involved in doing more stuff. But actually, we need to be led by God at his pace. We need to be trotting alongside him. We need to ride the wave that he's currently given us. And, to, and join in with what he's doing. Even if it's not world changing at the moment. But what is it today? In what way is God leading you today in just the small things? What what small things is he asking of you? Keep an ear out to him. Not necessarily mighty or powerful things, not things that require everything we've got, but just quietly being led by the Spirit uh, day by day. So, Lord, we just want to thank you for that word, Lord, um, that sense that you lead us not just into mighty acts, but into the small details of the things that you want to achieve through us day by day. May we not despise this day, if this day is a day of small things. May we recognise the wave that we are currently on with you and ride it with joy and peace, knowing that the day will come when all that you have planned will happen. That's the promise that you make. But trusting in you today for what you have for us today and making the most of that as you lead us. Amen. Great to chat to you, to you again. I hope you found that uh, helpful. Uh, on Sunday, we'll be looking at the, the next two little words in the second part, over me, that sense of us coming under God's authority. Great to talk to you. Speak soon. <laughs>